Right now, no one said the gig would be easy. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio taking on a host of challenges less than three months into the job. So how's he doing on pre-K, charter schools, and union contracts? Our panel will dig in. And then he knows all about difficult gigs. New York's accidental governor, David Patterson, speaks out on the new governor's race and more as he sits down with our Dominic Carter. And later, it's a little like Woodstock for people who don't like the president or the political left. CPAC 2014 underway in Washington, but do gatherings like this one hurt more than they help? Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman in once again tonight for Richard French. Thanks so much for joining us on this Thursday evening, March the 6th. We will get to all of those stories and more tonight, but we begin once again with the New York gubernatorial race. We have been saying for some time new Republican candidate Rob Astorino would face an uphill climb in his quest to unseat Andrew Cuomo. Today we sort of got that in microcosm. Astorino making his first official campaign stop on the steps of the Bronx surrogate courthouse, not an area he has any real hopes of winning. A Cuomo supporter even pierced through the crowd, circling Astorino with a thank you Andrew Cuomo sign. Perhaps not the image there, you can see it. Perhaps not the image that the Astorino camp was hoping to start their campaign with. Then again, perhaps the governor's armor isn't what it once was. A new NBC4 New York Wall Street Journal Marist College poll has the governor's approval rating at 42%, even as he scores high in other areas. Cuomo had been hoping to campaign without campaigning, if you will, even saying he's hoping not to go into full election mode until this summer. But today he made his first comments on the Astorino candidacy in a somewhat dismissive fashion, saying in a radio interview, quote, maybe it's Mr. Astorino, so we'll see who the Republican candidate ends up being, noting that in 2010, quote, first I was running against Rick Lazio, then it was Steve Levy, then it was Carl Palladino. Not exactly the most com flattering of company in which to place Astorino. Cuomo also out with three campaign ads and see if you can spot the subtle jab at the Westchester executive in this clip. One of my top legislative priorities for this session is to cut property taxes. They are simply out of control. My plan will cut your property taxes by requiring local governments to work together. Not just cutting property taxes, but in Westchester County. And for more, we turn to tonight's panel. See Scott Vanderhoff returns to the program tonight. Scott, a Republican, served five terms as the Rockland County Executive, holding that post from 1993 until last year. He is, that's why he's smiling, no longer on the job after five terms. He's joined by Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. And Mike Morey is here. Mike is a senior vice president of public relations at SKD Knickerbocker. Before that, he was the spokesman for the Christine Quinn mayoral campaign and was a senior aide to Senator Chuck Schumer. Welcome. Thanks and for thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, I, I'm curious, you've worked with Rob Astorino. Uh, your, your terms overlapped. Uh, we've been getting a sense of who he is all week. I mean, we've all met him and, and dealt with him in one way or another. Is he, he's going to have to punch, a lot of people say, above his weight in the gubernatorial <coughs> campaign. Do you think he's up for it? I think he is. I mean, I <coughs> and this is not a partisan comment. I think he ha he's, a, he's a person of substance and he has some ideas. Uh, he differentiates himself from others, um, and he's articulate about those ideas. So I think he, I think he can bring. I think if you're looking at this in terms of a, a debate, I think this will be a good debate, uh, even with the 30 million versus a million dollars in the bank. I think it's uh, he is not. He's to be taken seriously. Mike, you've you've worked statewide camp uh, or for uh, statewide uh, officers. You've also worked campaigns. Is the Cuomo approach going to be to try to knock out Astorino early? And if so, how? On, on substance, on issues, on his history, on... Uh, well, well, a couple things. So first, as the governor said on the radio show, right now, who knows what's going to happen <coughs> in terms of the actual nominee for the Republican Party. We thought there would be a, a very different nominee in the Republican Party last time, and Rick Lazio wound up getting his clock cleaned. Um, so we don't know where it is. We don't know what Car Carl Palladino is going to do, and we certainly don't know what Donald Trump is going to do. And from all, in, uh, all, all information out there says that Donald Trump has the overwhelming number of actual Republican county chairs statewide who are holding out for his candidacy. So let's see what happens there. Um, when we get to the point where we actually have a Republican nominee, I'm sure the governor will start engaging. But I think what's going to wind up happening is now is that Rob Astorino has announced is the floodlights are going to start shining on Rob in a way that he hasn't experienced before. Uh, he had a great re-election race, uh, an overwhelming uh, win in Westchester, but that's largely because uh, the resources necessary to really highlight his record. I mean, Rob came in with a financial advantage over Noam Bramson. That is it completely flipped on its head times 10 in mm -hmm. this case. And so Rob Astorino's big challenge is he is going to be unable able to define himself in enough time before the $33 million that Andrew Cuomo has is going to define him for New York. It, let me just add, though, I think, I think the, the, the idea, the red herring of Trump is, is really not there. He's not going to run. 
It's all been a, a game to play out his name. He can't get the conservative uh, nomination, and nor can Palladino. And when you add all of these things up, especially the conservative uh, piece of it, Astorino will be the candidate, I'm pretty sure. Well, look, well, well, there's going to be months to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And so long as Donald Trump is out there and even suggesting that he's running, it's holding back resources from Rob within the party apparatus to get behind him. Uh, so regardless, at the end of the day, whether Trump or Paladino decide to run, the fact that both keep floating a trial balloon and sort of keep waving that balloon uh, is going to get in the way of Astorino's ability to sort of coalesce the party sooner rather than later. You know, as, as we're in the first week within a declared candidate in the race for governor, we're hearing from a lot of voices. We're hearing from our panel all week long about Rob Astorino and his chances. And Dominic, you sat down today with former Governor of New York, De uh, former New York Governor David Patterson. We're going to play the full interview uh, coming up. But we did ask, or Dominic did ask him, about Rob Astorino's chances this fall. And here's what Governor Patterson had to say. But he knows all the issues. He's not a Republican that's going to strike fear into the hearts of Democrats. But he's not going to win this election. And, and it seemed to be, and Dom, correct me if I'm wrong, the sense that maybe someday Patterson is saying someday Astorino he might be even, right? Andrew, he went even further than that. I mean, I'm listening to this very good argument, point, counterpoint, on this race, and I'm just fascinated. I do give Mr. Astorino credit for this much. He does not play within the traditional Republican script. He reached out for African-American support in Westchester, going to a number of major African-American churches and got the support of, of some very prominent ministers, not just in this county, but, rep, but, but powerful statewide. So I, I was a bit shocked that Mr. Astorino started his campaign in the Bronx of all places. That says to me the symbolism that he's not joking around, he's in this to win it. But with that said, he's up against, if you will, the 800 pound gorilla. Mr. Cuomo's not gonna take too much of Astorino coming on his turf and he's going to strike back hard. On that point, though, if I could. So, so you know, Rob Astorino has been talking about his ability to generate support in the African-American Latino communities, and he'd been sort of trumpeting that as some sort of notch from his last election. Well, the Journal News themselves did a piece asking directly for him to substantiate that he actually achieved significant support from Latinos and African-Americans in his last race, and they've decided they won't release their numbers because the truth is, I think it's much more of a talking point than an actuality for Rob Astorino. And, yes, he did go to the Bronx today, and one of the things that he tripped up on in the Bronx was the fact that, you know, just four years ago, he had said the reason Westchester <coughs> property taxes are so high is because people from the Bronx and perhaps illegal immigrants were moving up to Westchester and buying houses they couldn't afford. So I, I give him credit for walking into the Bronx, um, but his talking point about his support amongst African Americans and Latinos is quite different from See, his actual th record. Th th this is what Astorino <laughs> is going to be up <laughs> against. They are ready, and, and meaning the Democrats, meaning that they have the best spokespeople in the game, and they're ready for him. I want to understand one thing. I, the only thing I would say, though, is by going to the Bronx, where you have a large Latino population, by speaking Spanish, which he's fluent in, is different than almost any other candidate. And, mm -hmm. and it says a lot about the kind of campaign he's going to run. Uh, and there'll be there'll be problems all the way through it, but I, I you know that's a very interesting oh, place I, I to start. Don't, uh, you're right, you're right. I mean, you have to, you cannot, uh, in, as a Republican, and Rob's a conservative Republican. Um, you know, he's going to have to show some outreach to those communities. Whether it translates into actual votes, I doubt it. If you're if you're in the Cuomo campaign, is what's the one worry, the biggest worry that you have? Where's the Achilles heel for the Cuomo campaign? You know, uh, look, the governor has governed uh, as a centrist Democrat. He has uh, been pretty successful at cutting taxes. He's been pretty successful at making sure that he takes care of uh, the major social issues that New Yorkers care about. You know, I'm not sure what the Achilles heel is, and he's got $33 million. I mean, look, Rob's uh, a photogenic and, and really well-spoken, uh, and he's been successful. I mean, his to his credit, he's been successful in, in a blue county, um, and he is very articulate. Um, but, you know, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Scott, quickly, where, where do you think Governor Cuomo might be weak? Oh, I think he's weak on the, on the gun issue. I, I think really? he's very weak on that. I think he's weak on this idea of giving the prisoners uh, free education, college education. People have a reaction to that. I mean, the idea of educating prisoners is not a bad one, but the way it was presented, I think, is especially upstate and for taxpayers. I think he's going to work the economy issue and the property tax issue. But I think, I think the governor has one real strong advantage, and that's the mayor because the mayor's so far left <laughs> that, that he looks quite central and moderate. I mean, 
And and that and I think I think the governor's people know that. And this week we began with the, the sparring between de Blasio and Andrew Cuomo. Up next in our next segment, we're going to focus on Mayor Bill de Blasio. The mayor not giving up on his key school issues, but is he making any progress on his agenda? We're going to get into that more next. Stay with us. <laughs>